Oregon. We know we're one of the coolest states. An awesome combination of rivers, mountains, desert, and ocean. We have the deepest lake in the country, the shortest river, and of course, we have Bigfoot. Quirky, yes. Unique, oh yeah. But there are also deep, penetrating questions to answer here. Like, why does Oregon have the most ghost towns in the nation? Why is it illegal to fish with canned corn? And what is the difference between maximum assessed value and real market value when calculating property taxes? Wait, what? If you're new to homeownership in Oregon, it can be confusing to keep up with how property values are calculated and taxed and how they can change from year to year. In Oregon, property taxes are collected by the county and distributed to each taxing district. Property taxes are the largest local revenue source we have to fund our schools, fire districts, cities, public safety, and other vital services. The amount of property tax that you pay is based on the assessed value of your property and the tax rates of the districts that service your property. The current system was started in 1997. Oregon voters passed Measure 50, which was designed to limit property taxes. Measure 50 created what's called the maximum assessed value, which was the real market value of your property in 1995, less 10%. Real market value is what your house would be worth if you were to sell it to any random dude for the best price you could get. The county assessor's office calculates real market value of all property in the county on January 1st each year. So if this house's real market value in 1995 was $100,000, then the maximum assessed value of this house in 1997 was, wait for it, $90,000. Makes sense, right? By Oregon law, your property taxes are calculated each year based on which of these two is lower, your real market value or your maximum assessed value. The lower number is then called your assessed value, and that's what your taxes are calculated on. So what about the house that's built after the maximum assessed values were created? One that wasn't there in 1995? Well, here's the answer. Each year, the assessor calculates the average of maximum assessed value to real market value for every type of property, like residential, and applies that percentage to the market value of new property in that year, so they get to have a MAV too. Let's go back to our sample house. Let's say that last year, our sample home's real market value was 100K, and its maximum assessed value, or MAV, was 90K. If the market is favorable and the home's real market value increases to $120,000, the maximum assessed value can only increase 3% this year, so the MAV can only go to 92.7. That's below the real market value, so the assessed value becomes 92.7. Of course, there are exceptions to every rule. For example, if our sample house gets a major addition, adding up to more than $10,000 in a year, or $25,000 over five years, both the real market value and the maximum assessed value would go up. On the other hand, if the roof had been replaced using similar materials to the original, that would simply be general ongoing maintenance and repair. Gomar, as they say in the business. Adding a second story, building a detached garage or a pole barn, those are exceptions that would change RMV and MAV. Replacing old kitchen appliances with new, well, that's GOMAR. And there you go, the basics on property values, which certainly have an effect on property taxes. Don't forget that property taxes also go up and down because of voter-approved ballot measures and other tax levy changes. Stay on top of your investment. Read your tax bill every year, as well as any additional information included with the statement. Pay attention to changes proposed by taxing districts. And get out and enjoy your really cool state and its unique features, like awesome lighthouses, or even the tallest barber pole in the world. Visit your county's website for more information and contact your local assessor's office if you have questions.